Chapter 9 Loves Next Door Stacy moved the dog off her lap and walked down the hall to answer the door. She had been slowly going out of her mind with worry. The whole town was now talking about how Justin caught Cheryl cheating, and Stacy was concerned about how he was handling it. She hadn't seen or heard from Justin in two weeks. She w he wouldn't answer her phone calls, and Stacy had respected his need for privacy and left him alone. She hauled the door open, and when she saw Justin standing there with a rather sheepish grin on his face, she let out a scream. "'Where have you been?' she yelled, and she jumped up and threw her arms around him, giving him a big bear hug. It felt so good to be held. He wrapped his arms around her and hugged her back. "'Can we talk?' he asked, as Stacy moved out of his way to let him in the foyer. "'Sure, come on in.' She waited until he passed over the threshold and closed the door behind him. "'Would you like a cup of coffee?' Justin took his coat off and hung on the back of the kitchen chair. "'That sounds great,' he said as he sat down. "'Oh, here,' he said, passing the bag to her that was still in his hands. "'I'm sorry you've been without your gifts. "'I've been keeping my, s I've been keeping to myself lately.' "'So I've heard. I'm sorry, Justin.' "'The concern in her voice was evident as she took the bag of gifts from Justin and put it in the corner. "'I wasn't worried about my gifts. I was worried about you. Are you okay?' Stacy prepared the drinks, placed a cup in front of Justin, sat down opposite of him, and began sipping her coffee. "'I'm fine now,' he said, but after I left you on the night of your birthday, it was a pretty bad scene. She reached out and held his hands. Justin took a deep breath and told her about seeing Cheryl with someone else as he was driving Stacy home that night. He continued with a blow-by-blow -blow description of how he had visited Cheryl later that evening. She rubbed her thumbs across his knuckles and spoke softly to him. "'For what it's worth, I'm really sorry.' and she meant it. She was sorry for the pain he had gone through, but a part of her was glad it was finally over. Yeah, I know, he said wearily, as he turned her hands over and studied the lines in her palms. Do you want to hear something funny? He said as he released his grip. What? She said, picking up her cup and took a deep swallow. It really doesn't bother me that she's gone. I mean, it bothered me that she was running around on me, but it didn't really bother me that she's gone. I wonder why. Perhaps she really didn't love her, she said, holding her breath. Justin didn't respond immediately. Do you want to hear something even funnier? He asked, his brown eyes dancing with the light. Stacy smiled. It was so good to see him back to his old self again. Tell me, she said, her hazel, her hazel eyes radiantly smiling back at him. Justin told her about greeting Cheryl at the door and with her many belongings stowed in a green garbage bag. Well, I guess that served her right, she said. It's a far cry from her Gucci bag. Luggage. This comment caused them both to double over in laughter, having to wipe away tears. Justin suddenly leaned over and took his hands, took her hands in his. You were the only one I wanted to talk to about this, and it feels so good to get it off my chest. Thanks, Stacy. He gave her a long, soft look, and then abruptly stood up, headed for the kitchen, headed for the coffee machine. Stacy tried to act nonchalant. Oh, uh, Justin, were you on the radio or something a couple mornings ago? Justin had almost forgotten, but immediately began to chuckle. They both knew who had instigated the interview with the radio station, and he's still receiving phone calls from friends who had either heard or had talked to someone who had listened to the radio broadcast. The local newspaper had even called, wanting to do a spread <clears throat> on his room of tackiness. <coughs> Excuse me. You won't be laughing when my collection is featured on 60 Minutes, he said, his brown eyes beaming. You mean Jerry Springer, don't you? We'll talk about my tele television career later. This is the first day of my new, new life, he announced. Leave your editing for now and come outside and play. Hallelujah for holidays, she thought. Where would you like to go, she asked as she watched him take the cups to the sink to rinse them. Grab your skates, he said, smiling. Let's go skating on the lake just like old times. Like that would really happen. That girl does not skate. Great idea, Stacy said enthusi enthusiastically heading down the hallway to search for a warmer sweater. She quickly moved to the bathroom and ran a brush through her hair and finished with a dab of perfume behind each ear. I'm ready, she said, grabbing her jacket and skates from the closet. Justin took the jacket from her hands and held it for her. He stood behind her as she slipped her arms into it. As he inhaled her intoxicating scent, an animal sound rose uncontrollably from his throat. Are you okay? she asked as she turned around and pulled the zipper up on her jacket. Justin coughed and turned to leave. I'm fine. Come on, he said, pulling her through the door into the brisk morning air. By the time Justin pulled into the driveway, the sun was starting to set, turning the sky deep shades of gold and orange. He shut the en engine off, got out, and walked around to help Stacy from the car. Walking towards her house, Stacy turned to Justin, who was standing by his car. That was funny, Justin. 
Would you like to come? That was fun, Justin. Would you like to come in for a bit to eat? She asked as she unlocked the door. Justin stood watching as the fading sunlight caught the ends of her brown hair, turning them a golden hue. The whole time they were together, the feelings that had been hidden for so long suddenly sprang back to life. Every turn of her head, the brush of her arm, or even the sound of her laughter made him want to, want to hold her and smother her with kisses. Hello, Justin, are you there? His face suddenly flushed, making Stacy laugh. Sure, I'd love to come in. I thought you'd never ask, he said, smiling broadly, climbing the steps and entering into the foyer. Stacy took, Stacy took his coat and hung it up next to hers, following him into the kitchen. How about some soup and a sandwich, she asked. Sounds great. I'll put the coffee on. She turned the soup on low, then took the bread from the box on the counter as Justin began collecting the meat and toppings from, from the refrigerator. Stacy clicked the radio on as they worked side by side. I had a good time today, she said, smiling as she passed him the bread. So did I. Justin was thinking how much it was, how much fun it was to do something spontaneous and how great it was that Stacy didn't take the time to get ready. They really were two of a kind. Stacy pulled up couple of plates from the cupboard, both uh, just as Garth Brooks began singing the dance. Stacy stopped and closed her eyes, softly humming the tune. Justin watched her for a few moments, then held out his arms. Would you like to dance, ma'am? He asked in an exaggerated southern drawl. She turned around and stepped into his warm embrace without hesitation. Her head came to rest against his chest, and she closed her eyes as they began to move to the music. Justin softly placed a kiss on her brow. Their bodies melted together as they slowly moved around the room. All too soon the song ended, but neither one moved apart. Stacy looked up and stared into the soft brown eyes that had captivated her days and nights for far too long. All thoughts of dinner disappeared as his head moved toward, toward to kiss her. Mesmerized, she closed her eyes and gave herself fully to, ki to the kiss. It was better than she remembered, sweeter than honey, softer than silk. She moaned from deep within as she pushed through her petal soft lips with his tongue. I'm glad this book's almost over with this kind of stuff. It's hard to read that. Justin moved her up against the counter and braced her there with his hips. The force of his arousal was straining between their demanding was straining between them, demanding to be released. His body rejoiced in the feelings that were rushing through his veins like hot molten lava. Stacy let him push her sweater and shirt above her breasts. A soft groan ripped through her body. A radiant heat of desire was burning her very soul. He moved her bra aside. She tastes so good, he thought as he continued to make love to her body with his mouth. It never felt this good with any other woman. With his eyes closed, he found her mouth and kissed her with all the passion he possessed. She wrapped her arms around his neck, pressing, his body in, pressing her body into his, as if making the two into one. She was hot, hotter than she'd ever thought possible. She watched his eyes flutter open. Then he leaned his head forehead against hers. Do you want me? She said timidly, her body trembling with desire. Justin took a deep breath. You know I do, Stacy. I just don't want you to think I'm doing this on a rebound, because that's not the way it is. I've wanted you for so long. I wanted you for as long as I can remember, she said honestly. Then she reached her hands up and ran them around his short, soft hair. That's all it took, the simple invitation. I want you, he growled, as he sealed their lips in a fiery kiss. Suddenly there was a mass of arms and eager fingers. Their lips met in a glowing embrace, tasting and devouring. Stacy pulled her mouth from his and reached down, taking his hand and leading him to the beckoning bedroom. Embracing beside the bed, Justin gently ran his fingers through her glistening brown hair. I've looked forward to this for years, he said, as he pulled her sweater over her head and arms refilling, revealing the fullness of her breasts. Stacy grabbed at the zipper on his sweater as Justin pulled her jeans down past her hips. She tore his sweater over his shoulders then started on his t-shirt, ripping it from him and inhaling the fresh male scent that belonged only to him. Their clothes seemed to fly off their bodies, landing on the floor in a heap beside the bed. Stacy placed a heated kiss in the middle of his chest. There, there they lay in all their glory, stripped bare of all restrictions. They came together in a fiery passion, heat against heat, heart against heart. He moved over her and joined their two bodies. A shameless noise of passion escaped her throat. Stacy arched her back and wrapped her legs around him. They moved as one, soaring to heights they had never known before. Closer and closer they came, their breathing raging until they reached the heavens. Justin, she screamed. 
loving the sound of his name as she exploded into a million shimmering pieces. Justin followed, his body grew tense, and the vein in his pulsing neck, which with each beat of his heated desire, waves of passion overcame him. The tension now released. He kissed her tenderly, rolling over and taking her with him. Stacy laid on her Stacy laid her head on his chest, spreading gentle kisses lightly over his moist body. The uh, effervescence of their effervescence, okay, of their love making still upon them. They touched, caressed, relaxed, and suddenly laughed, remembering the soup on the stove and realized that they were both famished. That was wonderful, she said with a sigh. She looked into his eyes and held the precious moments. Justin tightened his arms around her and placed a kiss on her brow. That was more than wonderful. It was out of the, this world. <laughs> That's the end of chapter nine, people! <laughs>